Let's look at the theory of the second best. If there are two market distortions, correcting one of them may not increase economic welfare or total surplus, but may actually reduce it. We're going to consider a market with two distortions. One, the government does not allow international trade. And two, the government subsidizes the good. It is possible that allowing international trade, that is correcting a market distortion, will reduce economic welfare if the subsidy is not removed. So we're going to start with two market distortions, no trade and a subsidy. In our example, the subsidy is going to be $4 per unit, which is just the vertical distance between the two supply curves over here on the diagram on the right. So here's the supply curve without a subsidy. Uh, with a $4 subsidy, it's going to shift down the supply curve vertically by $4. So the distance between, say, point A and here, 7 minus 3 is $4. So the equilibrium in this example, again, with no trade in the subsidy, is going to be at point A. There's no trade, so we can ignore this horizontal line here, which represents the world price. So the equilibrium will be at point A, where the supply curve with the subsidy intersects the demand curve. And so consumers are going to be paying $3 per unit and buying 7 units. So consumer surplus is going to be the difference between the height of the demand curve and the three dollars that consumers pay for the good all the way up to the last unit that consumers buy and that's seven units so the area of this triangle given by one half base times height is going to be twenty four dollars and fifty cents now as for producers producers are getting three dollars per unit but then they're also receiving a four dollar per unit subsidy for from the government so on net uh, producers are receiving seven dollars per unit the three dollars from the consumers and the four dollar subsidy from the government so we're going to look at the producer surplus is going to be this area the difference between seven dollars and the supply curve okay so it's going to be this triangle right here difference between seven dollars and the height of the supply curve all the way up to that seventh unit so the area here is going to be again twenty four dollars and fifty cents now the government subsidy this is going to be an outflow so it's a negative so the government is subsidizing seven units at four dollars per unit so we have a government expenditure here of twenty eight dollars adding up these three numbers total surplus or economic welfare is twenty one dollars now let's look at what happens when we allow free trade. So here we're going to only have one market distortion, and that is going to be the subsidy, this $4 per unit subsidy. The equilibrium here now is going to be at point B, where the world price, okay, we're allowing international trade, so the, the effective price in this market will be the world price of $4. And at $4, consumers will buy six units. That's the quantity demanded. Domestic sellers will sell eight units, that difference between eight and six is the amount of exports. So the sellers here will be selling two of their units in international markets. Now looking at consumer surplus, producer surplus, and the size of the government expenditures uh, with the trade and subsidy, consumer surplus is going to be the difference between the height of the demand curve and the price that consumers are paying all the way up to the amount that consumers are buying, which is six units. So this is the triangle right here that I'm outlining, that I'm outlining with my mouse. And we have $18. Producer surplus. Producers are getting $8 from each unit they sell. They sell the unit at $4 to consumers, but plus a $4 subsidy, uh, sellers are clearing eight dollars and they're selling eight units so the the difference between the price of eight dollars and the supply curve all the way up to the eighth unit and we're going to have here thirty four dollars of producer surplus in terms of the government subsidy this subsidy program will cost the government thirty two dollars eight units are being subsidized at four dollars per unit if we add up all three of these numbers, total surplus is $20, which is a little bit lower than before. The gain, there are gains from trade here. Uh, 
consumers allowing trade do lose. They're paying higher prices and not buying as much. So consumers lose $6.50 a consumer surplus, but producers gain. The producer surplus goes from $24.50 to $34 or $9.50 increase. So allowing trade okay, has a, a net benefit here of $3.00. The gains to producers outweigh the losses to consumers, but that's not the end of the story. Trade allowed the firms to sell one more unit of output. Say output went up from seven to eight units. This increased the government subsidy payments by exactly $4, subsidizing one more unit at $4. And so the net effect here is the gains from trade are $3 are being swamped by the losses of the subsidy. So the net effect here is it reduces surplus by $1. Or otherwise, we could just look at the effect of total surplus. It falls here by $1, 21 to 20. So to sum up here, this example is not an argument against trade, but actually an argument against subsidies. We should allow trade, but get rid of the subsidy in this example. Okay, I'll stop here.